The Stars and the Dogs by Yumi MacDonald The Akita dog Subaru lives in a small town in the far west of Tokyo. Although part of Tokyo Prefecture, it's a rural area and surrounded by beautiful mountains. Subaru's mother Sachiko is a single mother. Sachiko has two children, a son, Masaki, and a daughter, Misa. Sachiko divorced several years ago and helps her parents' small sake brewery. They live in a traditional Japanese house. Subaru spends a lot of time in the garden, but he is allowed to go inside the house. He loves his life here. Before coming to this house, Subaru was a stray dog. He was rescued by an Akita dog rescue group that Sachiko belongs to. Subaru is a wonderful companion as well as an excellent guard dog. Masaki and Misa take Subaru for a long walk every day. They like to explore unknown places and find waterfalls, ponds, and old temples. Subaru knows the way home, so they don't have to worry about getting lost. One day at the dinner table, Sachiko told the family that she was asked to adopt a female Akita puppy that was rescued on the street of Fukuoka, the largest city in Kyushu, the southwestern island of Japan. She showed them a picture of the dog. A white Akita, just like Subaru. We can have one more. Subaru will enjoy having a friend, said Misa. Everyone agreed. Several days later, a three-month-old puppy came to their house, carried by Mr. Suzuki from the Akita Dog Rescue Group. We named her Fujiko. She is as white as Mount Fuji, he said. Fujiko and Subaru were cautious in the beginning, but it seemed they clicked together. Soon, Subaru and Fujiko got closer. Fujiko was quiet at first, but it turned out she was a tomboy. They ran around, paw boxed, and went on long walks together. Sometimes they howled in unison at night. On a gorgeous spring day, Misa took Subaru and Fujiko for a long walk. They walked along fields of Chinese milk vetch flowers and canola flowers. The contrast of yellow and pink against the blue sky was striking. There was nobody as far as they could see. Misa had no idea how far they had gone. Suddenly, she noticed a perfectly symmetrical hill standing tall in the middle of the field. She could see a bright colored building on top of it, painted in red, green, black, blue, yellow, and decorated with hundreds of carvings. It looked like a shining palace from a fantasy. There were steep steps toward the mysterious palace. Abruptly, Fujiko dashed to the steps and ran towards the top of the hill. Subaru followed her. Hey, wait! Misa followed them as fast as she could. They walked up the steps and stood in front of the palace. Wow, what is this? Is this a dragon's palace? Misa said to herself. There were doors in the center of the structure, which were closed. It looked like a Korean temple. There was a sign which read Shichiseiden, which means Seven Stars Hall. Oh, I love that name. Is this related to astrology? Misa wondered. It was a surprise to find ancient Korean architecture in the middle of rural Tokyo. She noticed Fujiko was sniffing around and trying to go inside. Fujiko, the doors are closed and we are not allowed to go in, said Misa. The view from the hill was incredible. She could see blue mountains on one side and the tall buildings of central Tokyo on the other. After having looked around the temple and resting for a little bit, they went down the hill and headed home. Misa told her family about the beautiful Korean temple. Grandfather Nobuo said, that must be a temple of the Myokim religion, which worships the stars. I heard there were many people from Pikje, a kingdom located in southwestern Korea, during 18 BC to 660 AD, 
living in that area since the 7th century. Oh, wow. I knew many people from Pikje came to the Kansai region, the southern central region of Japan's main island, where Japan's ancient capitals were, and introduced Buddhism and high culture. But I had no idea they came as far as this part of Tokyo, said Misa. Ancient people walked unimaginable long distances. These people from Pikje built the Seven Stars temples to worship Polaris and the Big Dipper, which were the objects of worship of the Myokin religion, explained Nobuo. The temple was beautiful. It looks like they reconstructed it recently. The view from the hill was amazing, said Misa. It must be. I suppose it's a great place for stargazing, said Nobuo. Ever since Fujiko came back from the long walk to the Seven Stars Temple, she had changed. She still played with Subaru during the day, but after the sun had set, she would look up at the sky all alone every night. Her only company was her stuffed rabbit toy. Everyone wondered what had, was wrong with Fujiko. She's like Princess Kaguya. Maybe Fujiko is from space and is missing her home, joked Misa. If so, a UFO will come down to our yard to get her. That's cool, said Masaki. I think she misses her home. Maybe she feels lonely after sunset, said Sachiko, who then hugged Fujiko tight. Several days had passed. Misa was cooking ramen in the kitchen while leaving a K-pop concert on the TV in the living room. She noticed Fujiko was sitting in front of the TV and watching it seriously. She was alert and occasionally put her head to one side inquisitively. Fujiko, do you understand Korean? Annyeong, annyeong haseyo. When Misa said hello in Korean, Fujiko looked at her with a lovely smile. Oh, Fujiko, let's see. How about anja? Sit in Korean. Instantly, Fujiko sat and held her head high proudly. So you understand Korean. That's why you were watching the performance, said Misa. Sachiko smiled and said, Maybe we can post messages in Korean to find out who her former owner is. Right. If we know the former owner lives in Japan, but speaks Korean at home, it might make it a little easier to find him or her, said Misa. Wait a moment, said Sayoko, the grandmother, and continued. Fujiko changed after she visited the Seven Stars Temple. Didn't you say that she was sniffing all around the building? Don't you think she might have remembered her home in Korea? Maybe she's not from Japan at all. Hmm, that's possible. Fujiko was found on the street in Fukuoka. There's a possibility that she came to Fukuoka by ferry from Korea and got lost at the port, said Nobuo. Pusan to Fukuoka by ferry is only three hours. Maybe she came with her owner but somehow got lost on arrival, said Masaki. I think that's probably the case. I was surprised how fast she ran to the Seven Stars Palace. Maybe she thought she was back in Korea said Misa. The whole family sat together and discussed where Fujiko might have come from. Then, Sachiko mentioned that if she was from Korea, she could be a Korean breed, not an Akita. She could be a Chindo dog, exclaimed Misa. I think so too. Akita and Chindo are both big dogs with standing ears, curled tails, and double-coated fur. There are some differences, but overall they look very similar, said Sachiko. Fujiko, are you chindoke? asked Misa, using the Korean word for chindo dog. Fujiko reacted. She understood the word chindoke. After the discussion, they decided to post a picture of Fujiko with a message that they found her in Fukuoka. They looked for the owner on Twitter Kakao Talk and Facebook in both Korean and Japanese. 
surprisingly quickly, they received a message from the possible owner, a Korean boy named Suhyun. I'm Suhyun in Busan. She looks like my dog Pyor. Could you call her Pyor? He wrote. Misa called. Pyor, Pyor. Sure enough, Fujiko barked with her tail wagging. Suhyun, she is Pyor. She instantly reacted when I called her Pyor. Misa wrote back. Wow, that's amazing. Can we Skype so that she can see me on a big screen? Asked Suhyun. They agreed to Skype in fifteen minutes. He said he speaks Japanese, and Misa said she can speak a little bit of Korean. When Suhyun's face popped up on the screen, Fujiko was emotional. She was holding her stuffed rabbit tight and staring at Suhyun. Everyone nearly cried. They found out Suhyun and Fujiko went to the Pusan ferry port to see his friend off. While Suhyun and his friend were talking, Fujiko somehow slipped out from her leash and disappeared. He searched everywhere around the port, reported her missing to the police, asked dog rescue organizations, hung up lost dog signs, and posted notices on social media. However, he had never imagined that Fujiko had taken the ferry to Fukuoka. Suhyun, we will call her Pyor from now on. What does the word Pyor mean? asked Misa. Hoshi, star in Japanese, said Suhyun. Oh, star. Now I understand. I guess Pyor understands that Pyor is her name, as well as the word for star. Said Misa. I see. That explains her behavior. After seeing the Seven Stars Temple, she probably remembered her Korean name is Pyor. She remembered her name means star as well, said Masaki. Could be. Dogs are much smarter than people think. Pyor, great job for letting us know that you are from Korea, laughed Sayoko. They talked about how to bring Fujiko, whom they now started calling Pyor, back to Pusan. It was decided that Misa and Sachiko would take Pyor to Pusan while Masaki and the grandparents looked after Subaru. I'll make the travel plans, said Misa. Misa, I want to go to Chindo Island too. That is where the Chindo dog originated, said Sachiko. Is that the place where the sea parting happens? Where once a year, at low tide, you can walk from the mainland to the island? asked Sayoko. Yes, I think it occurs sometime in April. Maybe we can plan to go there on that timing, answered Misa. On April 10th, Misa, Sachiko, and Pyor flew to Fukuoka and took ferry to Pusan. As the ferry was getting close to the port, Pyor started to watch the port very intently, in a way that Misa had never seen. Then they noticed a young man standing at the port anxiously. That's Suhyun, Misa exclaimed. They finished the immigration process, passed through animal quarantine, and ran out of the terminal. Suhyun and Pyor ran to each other, and Pyor jumped up to hug him. Misa and Sachiko had never seen Pyor so happy and excited like this. Thank you very much for taking care of my Pyor and bringing her back to Pusan, said Suhyun. My pleasure. We are so happy for you and Pyor, said Misa. They had delicious chechopguk, marsh clam soup, at Suhyun's house with his family. Pyor never left the side of Suhyun. And eventually fell soundly asleep. The next morning, Suhyun's friend Yujun came and joined them. The four of them and Pyor drove around three hours to a nostalgic beach town called Moppo. It looked pretty with cherry blossoms, forsythia, and magnolia in full bloom. They climbed to the top of Yudar Mountain. And enjoyed the view of many islands floating on the ocean. They drove again, 
passed a big bridge and finally arrived at Chindo Island. The Chindo Sea parting is referred to as the Korean version of Moses' miracle. It happens for a few days when the ocean has extremely low tides once a year. A 1.8 long, narrow passageway to the Modo Island appears. When they arrived at the beach, there were hundreds of thousands of people already waiting. People in colorful dance costumes, musicians with drums, and people holding flags mingled at the beach, making the place look like a fairy tale. Finally, the pathway appeared. Thousands of people started to walk toward Modo Island. The people from Modo Island started to walk in the opposite direction. It was an astonishing sight when the two islands were connected by a long line of people. It lasted about an hour. Thank you, Pyor. If we hadn't met you, we would have never experienced such a life-changing event, said Misa. Pyor looked at Misa with smiling eyes. The four went back to the car and drove to Mokpo. The next morning, they drove back to Pusan. It was time to go back to Japan. Misa and Sachiko said goodbye to Suhyun, Yujun, Suhyun's family, and Pyor. Misa and Sachiko asked Suhyun and Yujun if they wanted to come to Japan. Yes, we want to go to Japan, they said. You have to come with Pyor. You can stay at our house. We want to take you to Odate in Akita. That's where the Akita breed came from, said Misa. That's great. We will see you again several months from now, answered Suhyun. On December 16th, a station wagon arrived at Subaru's house. Subaru noticed the car coming from far away and was already waiting at the gate like a statue. Misa and Masaki heard him bark and went outside in a hurry. Suhyun, Yujun, and Pyor came out from the car with Mr. Suzuki from the Akita Dog Rescue Group, who had offered to drive them. Pyor quickly ran towards Subaru. She ran around, shook her head as if doing a lion dance, and kept jumping up and down with joy. Everyone was very happy to see each other again. They had skiaki, hot pot beef, for dinner, and talked about what had happened in the past seven months. The next day, Misa, Masaki, Suhyun, Yujun, and the dogs Subaru and Pyor jumped in Sachiko's SUV. It would be about a seven-hour drive to Odate, Akita, the northeastern part of Japan. When they arrived at Odate, it was all covered in snow. Except for several businesses and some municipal buildings, all they could see were fields, farmhouses, forests, and ancient shrines covered in snow. High mountains surrounded the quiet city. Odate is the birthplace of the loyal dog Hachiko, who was an Akita dog. Hachiko became famous throughout the world because he had kept waiting for his deceased master, Professor Ueno, at Shibuya Station for nearly ten years. They stayed at an inn with hot springs. The next morning, they headed to an old shrine called Roken Jinja, which means the shrine of the elderly dog. The object of worship at the shrine was once a real Akita dog, Shiro, from the 17th century. Shiro was a hunting dog that belonged to the Matagi, bear hunter, Sadaroku. The villagers were moved by Shiro's loyalty to Sadaroku and built the shrine to honor him. They parked the car at the bottom of the mountain. From there, they climbed up the narrow road in the Akita cedar forest to the shrine. Subaru and Pyor were excited and ran fast to climb the snow-covered path. Misa, Masaki, Suhyun, and Yujun had to run to catch up with the dogs. On the top, there was a pair of beautiful white stone Akita dog sculptures. These statues are the guardians of the shrine. The shrine keeper was waiting and invited them inside. 
It was heated by a small stove, and many candles were lit. At the far end of the shrine was an altar dedicated to Shiro, on which was a pair of white Akita dog sculptures. There were many statues of dogs, which were donated by loyal supporters of the shrine. Everyone sat on the tatami floor and prayed to pay tribute to Shiro. Subaru and Pyor were sitting outside of the shrine quietly. After they prayed, they thanked the shrine keeper and walked the path to the bottom of the mountain. The air smells so good, said Masaki. Yes, it is really refreshing. I feel like I'm back in the 17th century, said Suhyun. Everyone felt there was something spiritual about this place. When they arrived at the inn, it was already dark. After having a wonderful local dinner, kiritampo, a pounded rice dish, they were invited to a snow igloo in the yard. Misa, Masaki, Suhyun, and Yujun sat inside surrounding a hearth. While snow usually looks icy blue, inside the igloo it was shining gold as a result of several candles that were placed on the recessed ice shelves. Subaru and Pyor were enjoying paw boxing in the snow. Both Akita and Chindo dogs love snow. The sky was clear and millions of stars were shining. Polaris and the Big Dipper looked magnificent. Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto lined up like a diamond necklace, and a crescent moon was shining bright on the ink blue sky. The next morning, they headed back to Tokyo and stayed at Misa's house. Finally, it was time for Suhyun, Yujun, and Pyor to go back to Korea. Everyone came out from the house to say goodbye to them. Mr. Suzuki came again to give them a ride. It was great having you over in Japan. I think we should continue this, Misa said. That's what we are talking about, said Yujun. So it's your turn next. Can you come to Korea with Subaru? asked Suhyun. Sure. I want to go again, and Subaru hasn't been yet, said Misa. I want to go too, said Masaki. You promise? Yakusoku suru? asked Yujun in Japanese. Definitely. Yakusok heo, answered Misa in Korean and laughed. Yakusok promise, is the same word in Japanese and Korean. Until then, they look forward to the next reunion. When the rain is blowing in your face And the whole world is on your case I could offer you a warm embrace To make you feel my love When the evening shadows and the stars appear And there is no one there to dry your tears I could hold you for a million years to make you feel my love I know you haven't made your mind up yet But I will never do you wrong I've known it from the moment that we've met And no doubt in my mind where you belong I'd go hungry, I'd go black and blue And I'd go crawling down the avenue No, there's nothing that I wouldn't do To make you feel my love